This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to the AWS training program. Today's topic is about Lambda functions. So Lambda functions are another and very important service from AWS. It's very handy tool. So let's start the class with the agenda and we'll talk about these concepts theoretically as well as we will perform all these things practically during our class. So overview of Lambda service create your first lambda function configuration of your lambda function create a test event test your lambda function schedule a lambda function with event bridge rule or you can add event based trigger to a lambda function so starting from creation of lambda running it testing it scheduling it we'll be talking about all the aspect of lambda functions now let's talk about uh, the brief or you can say the basic overview of lambda function lambda function is a serverless compute service we created ec2 instance right ec2 instance is elastic compute cloud in simple words it's a server for doing some computation for executing some code for doing some data processing right lambda also provides the same facility the only difference is it is serverless that means as a user you don't have to worry about the uh, launching a server or managing the infra or uh, what should be the configuration of your ec2 instance and all that's not required when we say serverless serverless in the sense like from a user end it's serverless you don't have to uh, worry about server launching and server configuration behind the scene definitely aws has to uh, launch some server on demand and uh, it is used to run your code you can you can understand that behind the scene it will launch a small ec2 instance temporarily not permanently it will run your code in response to events suppose you have triggered a lambda function based upon the events for example you have a s3 bucket and some other team is putting some files there some csv file there and you want to process those files as soon as that event is occurring or something else let's take uh, talk about some other scenario you have defined a lambda function and event you have defined as deletion of some object from s3 because you in normal scenario you are not expecting that someone is deleting anything from your bucket but what you want is as soon as someone deletes anything from your bucket some lambda function should trigger and the lambda function can do anything maybe it can send a notification over the slack it can even send an email or it can do some other action it may uh, block the access of s3 bucket or it can do anything else it completely up to your requirement but i'm just giving an example that depending upon your defined and configured event lambda function will do and as soon as your lambda execution is done behind the scene whatever server was launched that will be terminated and that's not our headache which server they are using what is the configuration they are using when they are launching it when they are terminating it that's not our concern and you can choose from variety of programming languages there are many programming languages available uh, in lambda as per your requirement you can choose and uh, you can execute your code there the most common is python it scales automatically in response to incoming request. That's also very important, uh, important point. It's serverless. That means we don't have to start and stop the server. At the same time, it is scalable. Suppose someone put thousands of file into S3 bucket suddenly. So those thousands file will trigger your Lambda thousand times. And maybe you have defined your Lambda in such a way that whenever one file is put your lambda will pull that file first and it will process that file and the output it will write somewhere i'm not talking only about notification or something it's completely data processing you copied a 10 mb of file into s3 as soon as you will put lambda will trigger it will pull the 10 mb file from s3 it will process it and then it will write into some s3 bucket or some redshift or athena or whatsoever right 
so if you put thousands of file together that means your lambda has to process thousands of file but lambda is capable of doing that lambda is completely scalable as per your need as per your data load it can scale up or scale down if there is no data if there is no processing it will scale down to zero that means it will shut down if there is more load the configuration will be taking randomly and it is capable of executing multiple requests at the same time okay the next is you can schedule lambda function with event breeze rules as well in case you don't want to go with trigger based because there is no trigger you know that okay i want to perform this action every day at 9 pm that's all maybe anything maybe some cleanup activity at 9 pm your suppose lambda will scan your s3 uh, bucket and whatever file it will find which are older than 30 days or older than seven days something like that okay it will delete that so there is a scheduled maintenance or some scheduled data processing every day at 9 pm you want to perform something then we can schedule this how to do it and how to test it i will show you <clears throat> It can be used for processing time up to 15 minutes. You can say that that's a limitation. If you want to do something, if you want to execute some code which, which keeps on running more than 15 minutes, that means Lambda is not the right option for you. Lambda is only for ad hoc stuff, very small things. Something comes up and it executes your code five minutes, something like that, or even lesser than that, it's okay. But if you need something, beyond 15 minutes your lambda will time out and you won't be able to get your output or get your processing done in that case you should go with some server like ec2 which keeps on running because ec2 can keep on running entire 24 hours it depends upon your requirement if your data processing job is running for three hours ec2 instance can handle that but lambda cannot okay this is very basic overview before we proceed further before we start creating the lambda actually in case you are having any doubt on these points you can ask okay seems like there is no doubt so let's move to the next slide the next is create a lambda function so i have captured a few screenshots and attach in the pdf for your quick reference but we can do all these things live in my aws account now so let's go to my browser and we'll log in into our AWS account So I logged in into AWS account and I can go to the this search bar. I can type Lambda. You can see this uh, tagline run code without thinking about servers. That's the beauty of Lambda functions. You just worry about your code and your logic. How to run it, where to run it, uh, what should be the configuration that you don't need to worry about. <clears throat> so let's click on there. As of now, you will see that there is no Lambda function you can see that functions zero there is no lambda function that's fine we will create that click on create function so there are many ways to create a lambda function you can see that author from scratch that means you yourself will write your own code and that is the most common way to create a lambda another way is use a blueprint depending upon different type of uh, use cases you see th see this one s3 get object python an amazon s3 trigger that retrieves metadata of the object that has been updated basically if you want to get a code snippet of python which is capable of doing s3 get object that means reading the data from s3 you can use this one similarly there are many more dynamodb is there node execution is there kinesis is there and something is there right but usually in my experience from last around five years i'm working on aws we never use these blueprints because our requirement is always specific right 
So we always write our code from scratch. So we'll go with this one. Let's write some name. My first lambda function. You can give any name up to your runtime. Runtime is like programming language. Let's see what are the available one. We have .NET 6. Go language is there. Java is there. Node.js is there. Python 3.9. Ruby. Other supported. Java 8, Node.js, Python 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, and many more. Right? So it all depends upon your requirement. But the most common one is Java. Sorry. Uh, Python. Where is that? Python 3.9. We'll click on that. Okay. After that architecture, choose an instruction to set architecture you want to uh, want for your function code. It depends. Sometimes, suppose any programming language that can be executed only on some 64 bit or some specific requirement is there, right? In that case, you can choose your uh, processor architecture accordingly. Otherwise, it's okay. You can go with the default one. 64 bit is okay. Next one is permissions. Permissions always plays very important role in every AWS service because this is a processing. Uh, processing uh, i would say unit right because lambda can do anything as i said right it can do anything but it can do anything is subject to the permission associated with your lambda function just like we created an im role and we associated that im role with ec2 instance and now ec2 instance can only perform those things which are part of that im role on a similar note we need to create one im role and associate that IAM role with Lambda function. And Lambda function can perform only those particular specific actions, not beyond that. Okay, so let's come down and let's expand this one. So you can see now there are different options like create a new role with basic Lambda permissions. 